G'day, I'm a three-time world champion. I think I know what I'm doing, said Max Verstappen today. Past F1 great Damon Hill was at the track today, but it was his comment that he made in a Sky F1 podcast that got Max Verstappen's back up. And what was the comment? That he was unable to drive fairly. And when Max was quizzed on that in the press conference today, he responded with, I don't listen to those individuals, I just do my thing. I'm a three-time world champion, I think I know what I'm doing. It was a sharp and dismissive response from a man who's not frightened to say what he thinks. And I quite love that about Max. You're never in any doubt about what he's thinking. Damon also said that Max was daft and like Dick Dastardly. Now, many of you younger people would have no idea perhaps who Dick Dastardly was. It was a cartoon character in the Wacky Races, which I used to love. And he wasn't a very fair racer. Damon compared Max to Dick. Now what you've got to understand is Max doesn't care about criticism. It's water off a duck's back. What he does get annoyed about is the fact that the media want to bring this up all the time and push him on it. That matter was raised by a journalist. A little later on, David Croft chimed in with, you're a three-time world champion, absolutely, but we're never too old to learn new things. Who do you listen to? Max's response was, people that are objective and close to me and not just there to stir shit. Well, he didn't say shit. He nearly said shit, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. And then a short time later, he was pressed again by another journalist to give a name of someone that he took advice from. And once again, he patted that one away as if to say, no, I'm not getting drawn into that argument. Now, I've read a lot of comments on my social media that the British press is biased against Max. Well, I spoke today to a number of British journalists and commentators about this matter. And I said, are you biased? And they said, no, we praise him where praise is due. But when he gets two 10 second penalties in the last race, yeah, uh, any media is probably gonna climb on board that as a story. Now, with Max, as I said before, he doesn't really care about the criticism, but what he doesn't want is drama for his family, his sister, uh, Kelly, and all that stuff. And when all this stuff fires up, his family copped the brunt of it. And that's obviously not fair, and I'm on his side on that. But somebody pointed out to me today that he probably thinks that the media is biased because in his country, the Netherlands, the media is so on his side, and he feels, this is what a couple of commentators said to me, that in Britain, surely it must be the same thing. You must have the British press going hammer and tongs for Lewis, George and Lando and denigrating anybody who perhaps provides a challenge to them. But I'm not sure that is 100% the case. The British guys don't think so, but in Max's head, he's got that as his primary thought. And who does he listen to? Well, certainly he'd be listening to um, his father, Jos, and somebody said, oh, Jos has been banned from the Red Bull motorhome. Well, I can tell you that's absolute rubbish because he will be at the track on Friday. He also listens to his manager, Raymond Vermeulen, and I imagine his coach, Rupert Mannering. But let me go back to another matter raised in that press conference where Max was about to say bullshit, uh, and he held it back because he said, I don't want to get a penalty. And then he brought to light something that I think is very fair, that Charles Leclerc accidentally said the F word in the last press conference after the Sunday race, where were we last week? Mexico. And he said, it's not fair. Nothing's been said about that, and yet he got hammered for his use of the very same word. And Charles apologised for it straight away, but you can't be having one rule for one person and one rule for another. And I think that's where a lot of you would agree that there are some problems that perhaps need to be sorted out in the FIA. But as he said in that press conference, apparently it only counts for me. He didn't name Charles, he just said somebody said this in the press conference afterwards. Will anything happen with that? I will look forward to seeing what the outcome of that is. Let's go on now to Franco Colapinto. Let me tell you that all the flights from uh, Buenos Aires to, where are we, Sao Paulo, booked out. Charter flights have been put on, they're booked out. And I was told today that there are some 50 busloads of people coming by road from there to here. What's the journey? 30 hours, not 13. 30 hours on a bus. What worries me is that this event has been sold out for some time. Where are these people going to get tickets? Are they just going to come to the track and hang around the outside hoping to catch a glimpse of their new star performer? I can't wait to find out. Or will they be rolling up the hotel he's staying at and hoping to catch a glimpse of them there? You never know. But I can tell you that tonight, I shot some 600 people out on the grid for F1 experiences posing with trophies. And I reckon every 15th group 
had an Argentinian flag. I could not believe the number of flags, and that very rarely ever happens. I can tell you one story. I was down that far end of the paddock today, and uh, I was actually waiting for Franco because I figured he had to cross to the garage. And he did come out, but I didn't have my camera up to my face. I had it at my waist. And he was coming towards me and looking at my lens, so I put it up at just chest height and was shooting blind. And he got right close to it, and this image turned out not too bad for a blind shot. And I said to him at the time, way too close, way too close. And that's what I love about Franco at the moment. He is loving his life in Formula One because he has got, what, nine races to show to the world that he wants a seat in this sport. And he's certainly got the whole country behind him. Well, that's, well, when I say country, I'm talking about Argentina, behind him. And what about the Brazilians? Are they excited by him? No, I don't think they are. I was told that because they're such rivals when it comes to football, one side doesn't necessarily love the other side. But the Brazilians certainly loved Ayrton Senna. And today, Sebastian Vettel was in the paddock with a big helmet. A big, big, big. You could get people inside there. And that's exactly what happened out on turn one at 5 p.m. tonight. Seb has actually been out collecting rubbish on the streets of Sao Paulo with a whole host of people. He had a police escort. Uh, they were doing this for, um, it's not a charity, it's just to shine the spotlight on the poorest of people who actually make their living from sifting through garbage and reselling it. And I saw something similar in Manila uh, the other day, and it's uh, an eye-opening scene. So Seb has certainly done that with this initiative, and this helmet is actually made out of waste that they have collected. It was brought in on the back of a flatbed truck, manoeuvred onto the track, and then all of the drive, well, no, when I say all, it wasn't all, and I'll tell you who wasn't out there for various reasons, and I don't think you should read anything into this. Fernando Alonso, well, I'll go into that because he was ill and not at the track. Kevin Magnussen, Nico Hulkenberg, and Liam Lawson. So all the drivers lined up across the track for a big wide shot, and then they all, well, I think I've, all of them got inside this helmet where Seb was hosting them and then there was a photo opportunity with a handful of them putting their heads out the front uh, of the helmet underneath the visor. Now, I'm not sure if this is correct, but I'll put it out there. I think that helmet's going to stay at that corner for the whole race, a bit like Seb's Buzzing Bees promo that he did in Japan. But certainly there's no doubting Sebastian Vettel is a very active man for the community. Now, other things today, we are in a quite unique paddock. It is the only one that is covered. It's a quite a cosy feeling. And come race day and even Saturday, the atmosphere in there is electric. People shouting from the top balcony down to those in the TV media pen and hundreds of people in the paddock hoping to get a glimpse of their favorite driver or team principal. I wanna go back to the Liam Lawson, Sergio Perez drama last week. Um, Sergio was actually questioned on it a couple of times today and he said, look, it's all died down now and we're moving forward. But I believe what Liam was pretty angry about was the fact that Perez was brake checking him for a lap, at least a lap, uh, which Liam said is quite dangerous. And I have no doubt about that at the speeds that they go and brake checking is just holding back on the power so that uh, the driver behind you gets nervous, uh, can't predict what you're going to do. And that seemed to be the reason behind Liam getting cranky and flipping him the bird, which he did apologize for. Fashion-wise in the paddock today, oh, Lewis Hamilton paid his respects to the great Ayrton Senna wearing this outfit in today. And somebody asked me, where's that shirt from? And I, I missed the opportunity to ask him. I did actually have an opportunity and completely forgot. But uh, it was impressive along with the pants. He's actually done something similar in the past. And there's no doubt that the Brazilian crowd love Lewis Hamilton. He has really been adopted by this audience here and it is a passionate audience. Here's Yuki Tsunoda in a casual outfit. Uh, oh, by the way, both Liam and Yuki were offered cans of Red Bull as they came in today. Yuki took his, Liam handed his straight back. I'm not sure you can read anything into that, but I did make a note of it. Here's Charles Leclerc in a Namias shirt, Oscar Piastri, smiley and uh, in plain clothes, as a lot of the drivers were today because of that security risk. And have a look at the size of Oscar Piastri's neck. In comparison with his head, it's magnificent. And I was talking to a driver last night at a function, and he was saying, look, I'm normally a size M, medium for men, but I can't buy a polo shirt in M because the collar is too tight for me. I have to go up to double the size or get them custom made. An interesting thought that I had not actually considered in the past. Here's Lando Norris, dressed in a Playboy hoodie. Esteban Ocon here, looking like he comes straight from uh, a session at the gym in a 
simple plain grey tracksuit. Here's Valtteri Bottas's post on Instagram showing what he was wearing. I didn't actually see him come in this morning. Joe Guan Yu looking sharp. And Nico Hulkenberg in a classy polo top. This is not a Palm Angels uh, top, which is, uh, of course, a sponsor of the team. This is something that he likes. Now, some of you will be thinking, is Fernando Alonso going to be driving in FP1 and 2? Well, I was told today that, yes, he will be at the track. He just chose to stay a little bit longer, one day, in Europe to get his illness seen to. And he didn't want to get it seen to in Mexico City. He thought he'd get better care back uh, in Europe. If you've never been to the F1 paddock, uh, I can tell you that on a Thursday media day, all the drivers come and um, face the waiting media. And there's one camera and there's a little speaker behind that and we can stand behind and hear what the driver says. And the vision is given to all of the teams so they don't have to send their own camera people down. And they start with the furthest team, so what's that, uh, Haas, and then they work their way up to Red Bull, who are the last people to have to front that. But I did notice today that there is only one set of logos behind one team, and it's Ferrari have their sponsors' logos behind their drivers. And I asked, why don't the others? And the thing was, Ferrari actually asked for it. None of the other teams have asked, and I don't know whether it would be approved, even if they did request it, because there's quite a bit of work changing, because uh, from race to race, sponsors change. Yes. Um, some sponsors come on board for X number of races. So these sponsors' names, and these are the garages that I shot last week in Mexico City, may not be the same list of sponsors here in Brazil. If you've been following F1 for a little while, you probably know this man. This is Lloyd. He was Lewis Hamilton's security guy. And you'd often see Lloyd in the background of photos with Lewis, and he was very effective at keeping the great man safe. Well, today we saw him back at the track, and I thought, well, he's back with Lewis. And I had a chat with him, and he said, no, not with Lewis. Uh, wouldn't say who he's working with, but I think he's going to be at a number of races coming up. My best guess is he's doing security work for F1. I could be wrong, but uh, it was good to see him back in the paddock. Somebody said to me today, because there was a fair amount of work still going on in the paddock early on the day, this would never have happened in Bernie's day, because Bernie was a stickler for detail. And today, Bernie was at the track, sitting with Jonathan Wheatley from Red Bull, who will next year be going to head up Audi. And they were sat there for a heck of a long time, probably 40 minutes, I reckon. What were they talking about? I have no idea and they're unlikely to tell me. I thought he was looking pretty good for a man who in six years' time will be turning 100, and who four years ago had a son with his wife Fabiana, who is some um, 40 plus years his junior. Now, one final thing. Can you please subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber already? It's such a simple matter. Hit the subscribe button. You'll be alerted if you want for all future released videos. And coming up next week, I think you're gonna enjoy this one, drivers and their armored vehicles in both Sao Paulo and Mexico City. I'll tell you what vehicles are rated for which ammunition. It is a fascinating video. And if you're looking for all my other content, merchandise and stuff, that's where you need to go. Thank you for watching. And stay fashionable. For his use of the word, the same word, right down the dull end of... Oh,